All right, so in this After Effects tutorial, we are going to make this looping desert day-night cycle animation. You can download the project file for free. Link is in the description and it will have everything that you need to follow along with me. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so when you open the project file, you're going to have a day scene and a night scene. And you'll also have a reference folder here with my animated version of all this in case you want to poke around in there, you want to cheat a little bit, that's all right. Okay, so what we're going to start off doing here is let's just take this day scene here, we'll go up to the design folder and we'll take this day scene and let's just duplicate it and make a copy with click on this and click control D or you can take it and drag it right into this composition thing to duplicate it. All right, so now we have day two, I'm going to click enter on it and we'll just call this like main comp. All right, so now we have a duplicate of that and we'll just start clean in here. All right, great. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just make this like sun drop down and the moon pop up to establish some kind of rhythm to all this. Okay, so let's click on the sun layer, click P and we'll make a little keyframe here and maybe about one second in we'll drop this down, down here. All right. And let's go to the night composition, grab this moon, control C to copy and let's paste this layer in, all right? So once this sun drops down on where this keyframe starts, this moon layer wants to pop up. I'm gonna drag this over, click P, make a keyframe, and with the same kind of timing, so if this is one second, then this will pop up in one second. Make a keyframe there, go back to the first one, and drag it down. All right, so it's gonna look something like this. And we don't have any easing right now, so it doesn't look nice. So let's take this first keyframe of the sun and this second keyframe of the moon and let's easy ease them with F9, all right? Now, easy ease doesn't look good in my opinion, so let's get in here with the graph editor and make this easing a little more dramatic. So what we want here is like a ramp, all right? So it's gonna start real slow and then get dramatic like that. That's nice, okay? And then we want the inverse on this second keyframe. So we want it to ramp down like that. All right, so we have this nice, really kind of fun ramping, easing action like this, all right? I think that looks great. And, and since this moon is a fun shape, why don't we add a little bit of rotation to it, all right? So I'll click R here, make a keyframe, Click U to reveal all keyframes like this. That way we can just keep things even. And I will go back a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna go all the way back here so I can see what I'm doing. And maybe we want the rotation to be like that way. That could be cool. All right. And then I'll just put it back in position once I've finished seeing what I'm doing. And we'll easy ease this just to get something on the board. And then go into the graph editor and boom ease it into position. So we have something like that. That's kind of fun. So now what I want to do is I want to um, recolor everything. When the sun drops down and the moon comes up, everything wants to change color. So I don't think this is going to look very good if I was to like add an adjustment layer over it all. And maybe we added a, satur a hue saturation and just kind of like change the hue of it. I mean, you could do this, but it looks cheap, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna individually change the color of everything. But we gotta figure out a way to do this in a manageable way. So what I wanna do is set up a color controller, a way to control a bunch of colors on one layer so I don't have a huge mess. I don't have a bunch of layers, a bunch of keyframes everywhere, and it'll be easy for me to change things in the future if I want to. So what that's gonna look like is this. If I go ahead and create a new null object by right clicking in a blank space and create a new null object, and I'm gonna name this color control. Great, like that. And let's go ahead and add a color control onto here. Great. All right. So now if we were to do something like 
click on this sky and add a fill to this. I'll add a fill to the sky. Now the sky is red. We can go ahead and link this fill to the color control. So if I go back to the color control and I want to um, go ahead and lock this color control up here by clicking this little lock button here. And you can see we have a second tab up here for the sky effects. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually drag this down like this now. So we will have now two effects windows like this. This will make things um, a little bit easier. So if I go ahead now and alt click on this color for the fill of the sky, it's gonna open up this little expression window down here and we will pick whip this to the color control here. Great, now these two colors are linked. So if we change this color on the color control, it's gonna change the color of the sky. All right, so let's go ahead and change this back to the color it's supposed to be and we'll name this one sky. All right, so now let's make these um, controllers for all of the possible colors that we might need. So I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times by hitting, clicking on this and hitting Control D and we'll duplicate this just like a bunch of times and we'll see how many we need. So we have one for sky. Now we need one for the light and dark parts of these dunes. So I'll rename this light dunes and dark dunes. And then we also have these hills here. So we'll say hill one and hill two and hill three and I think that should be it so let me go ahead and and color pick these this is the light part of the dune this is the dark dark part this is hill one this is hill two and this is hill three so now what we can do is we can go ahead and now link all of these colors to their individual parts now for the this these uh now for these dunes um, we can't add a fill effect to this because you can see the light and dark are on one layer So we add a fill effect to this what's gonna happen is it's gonna um, just add like red to the entire shape But since this is a shape layer the colors are Separated onto the actual shape so we could search for color on this Okay, and now we have these individual color blocks on in the contents of this layer and we can just link this so let's link the dark part to the dark part the light part to the light part. And now we can see if we change, for example, this, it's gonna change that, change the dark part, it's gonna change the dark part there. And we'll go ahead and just do this now for the other dunes, search color again, and link dark to dark, light to light, light to light, and dark to dark. And just while you're doing this, just go ahead and just confirm that everything is changing everything, right? You've linked everything properly, which it looks like we have. And now go ahead and do this for the hills. And again, you could add a fill effect to the hills or just search for color. Does not matter for these. And then go ahead and link these up to these color sliders like this. And then just make sure that everything is working properly again. All right. So now once this stuff is all linked up properly and you have a nice rigged up color slider, now what we can do is we can actually start to keyframe this. So once this sun starts to go down like this, we can make keyframes on all these right here. Boom, 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 boom. We have keyframes on the first frame when the sun starts to go down and then we'll go over to two seconds when the sun or the moon is up here and now since this effect panel is locked, we can just hop right over to the night scene and now uh, color pick in here. So hit the sky with the sky part, the light dunes with the light, dark dunes with the dark, hill one, hill two, and hill three. Hop back into our main comp. And now it looks like our scene is going to shift colors like that. Pretty cool. All right, so now I think I wanna hit this with a little bit of easing here to make the color flow seem a little more natural. So F9 there, see how this looks. And I think the one thing that I don't like is that these um, dunes, they turn, a little bit, they turn a little green right about here, which I don't love. So I will just manually go in here and maybe shift the easing a little bit here. Maybe I'll turn these back to, um, 
non-eased keyframes by clicking linear on the keyframe key frame interpolation, something like this, so that they do a much um, quicker ease, something like, like that. And it looks a little bit better. All right, so now we have this um, nice color shift that goes on. Great. So then another little touch we could add onto this is like a little glow on the mountains and hills. So what I'm gonna search for is a drop shadow effect. Drop shadow, add this on to, let's say this dune, okay? Now if we scroll in and let's make the color the same color as the sun here and the direction to be pointing at the sun, full opacity, and maybe a little bit larger of a distance. There we go, something like that. Play with the angle until it looks right. So it's something maybe like that. That's pretty cool. Now what we can do is we could actually copy this drop shadow effect, this whole thing here, and copy this and paste this onto the color control like this. And now with this drop shadow effect on the color control, we could just link all of the properties of this drop shadow effect to the one that's on the color control. So we could link the color to the color like that by alt clicking and dragging the um, pick whipping it over. We could alt click on the opacity and link that to the opacity. Alt click on the direction, link it to the direction and alt click on the distance and link it to the distance like this. And I accidentally made a keyframe here. Go ahead and clean that up. So now if we were to change anything on this effect on the control, it's going to change it here. So now what we can do is we can copy this drop shadow that is on our dune layer with all of these red um, expressions here, which are telling us that it's linked here. So we can just go ahead and copy this and let's paste it on every other layer except for our sun and our sky. Something like this and our moon, not our moon. Cool, so now we have this. And what's the benefit of doing that? Well now, when our sun drops down and our moon drops up, we can move the direction of this, okay? So I'll make a keyframe here. And now let's move it over, rotate it around, something like that, all right? Give it a little bit of ease. I'm clicking U to hide and reveal all keyframes. Ease it with F9 and let's see how it looks. Cool, now we have some like responsive highlights from our sun and moon. Very nice. And then one last little touch. Let's get some stars in here because in the desert, there's no light pollution anywhere. You can see the full night sky. So we got to get all of these stars in here. So I'm going to go back in here, copy all of these stars, control C, and we'll paste them in here like this. They're going to paste at the top. So we want to drag them down to the bottom, right above our sky layer. And we'll go forward to about right here. And there we go. I'm gonna click P on position to make a keyframe. Go forward a few keyframes to where the sun pops up. Make another keyframe. And we'll go back to the first one. Now we wanna drag them all down. Now, I want these to have like a nice stagger to them. So what I'm gonna do is instead of just dragging them all down evenly, right, like this, instead of just dragging them all down like this, what I'm gonna do actually is drag them all down to like the same baseline here. And what that will do is make them rise to the sky at different speeds, okay? We'll make them all kind of come in a little bit uneven because they were dragged down unevenly. And we'll give it a little bit of a nice little stagger effect. Okay, so we'll bring them all down like this. We will give them all a little bit of easing with F9. You could even open up the graph editor here, zoom in a little bit and give them this nice little ramp here that tells them to ease in like this. And maybe for good measure, we'll just even stagger them all. Maybe one frame from each other, something like this. Could be nice. All right, and now, stars come in like that. Let's check this puppy out all together. 
Woo! But we can't forget a loop, right? Because what would this animation be if it didn't loop? So let's take this main comp here, drag it into its own new composition, find where the loop ends. It's at about maybe three seconds. And I will trim it by holding Alt, right bracket like this. And then I will duplicate it with Control or Command D, drag it to where it ends, right click, time, time reverse layer, and then go to the end of it and click N to trim the timeline. Now let's play it all back and see what this is looking like. Very cool, very, very cool. All right, that is about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you wanna see more beginner projects like this. Leave a comment and let me know what you think and I will make more like this. All right, so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.